Broadcasting from New York, New York. It's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. Zach Peter catches me up on the latest with Erica Jane and the Girardi case. The Vanderpump Rules trailer is released, but do we care anymore? Roni gets a reunion, Megan and Harry's approval ratings sink, and in the spirit of old Hollywood talk, I examine the Madonna, Britney, Christina, Missy, 03 VMA performance. It really set the bar. That and more with Zach Peter right here. Let the ranting begin. I am glad to be back. I am joined virtually, of course, but I'm glad to have him here. Zach Peter is joining the host of Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. Welcome back to Grant's Rants. It's been a minute. Hi, Grant. It has been a minute. Yes. Thank you for having me back. Oh, my pleasure. I, it's been a minute for me and for everybody. I have taken time off this summer. I can barely catch my breath. There's always things happening and um, you know, working a lot. So that's what, where I've been. But I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I can say this every time, but I'm really trying to stay more consistent. Uh, I never have let this much time pass. I just can't. I'm doing all that I can, but I'm here now to rant. So I'm glad it's finally time because there's there's a, there's a good amount of stuff to talk about here. I can't keep up specifically around um, Erica Jane. And I know that, Zach, you have been on this from the start. You know what's going on. So I want to get a little bit of an update from you. The latest status. What, you know, what are you making of this? I mean, it is, it's gone from pretty mess to hot mess to like one big hot train wreck. I yep. like it changes and continues to like explode every day. I mean, it, it's hard because when people ask me to like talk about the case, I'm like, it's not looking good. You know, mm-hmm. like, unfortunately, like it's not looking good for the victims is what I mean. And so yes. it, it looks like there are a lot of players. Everybody has, you know, something to profit off of. I know a lot of the attention is on Erica. I mean, and yeah, rightfully, she's on Beverly Hills, literally crying about her life as she's eating caviar pie. Um, and so mm-hmm. and she's not doing herself any favors on social media. She's, you know, definitely not trying to shift the public perception. If anything, she's just like, you all hate me fuck you and so it's just you know it's it's kind of hard to to empathize with her but it's you know everyone's attention is on her but i feel like there are so many other bigger players involved in this that also have money and i'm like guys like we need to be looking at all these other people Mm -hmm. that were a part of this scheme that worked at the law firm like you know my impression of her is she really is just the trophy wife that thought she was a lot smarter than she actually is and was duped by her husband should she still pay the money back absolutely did she benefit off of the lifestyle absolutely did she run up an insane amex bill 100 and she should be held accountable for that how much she's going to have to pay back is ultimately what's up for you know discussion they're trying to break it all down right now but i mean there are so many other players here grant like mm-hmm. tom's son-in-law and tom's daughter who were all the tom's son-in-law david lira worked at the law firm and was you know collected like part of his own shady dealings that you know we need to look at all of these players and when you dig into it it's getting really unfortunate to the point where we're realizing that a lot of the banks that he was taking out, that Tom was taking out loan loans from, a lot of the lenders that he was taking out these loans from, they're the ones that are first in line to get back any of the money that oh, the bankruptcy wow. trustee is trying <sighs> to bring in. So the victims yeah. are at the back of the line of people that are going to be getting their money. Mm-hmm. So it's really like a bad situation for them. Unfortunately, Tom doesn't have a lot of... Um, or seemingly doesn't have a lot of money. He was very good at shuffling money around, creating a lot of these shell companies. It's now looking like EJ Global was just one of the many shell companies he was uh, using for tax write-offs. So like, again, I'm like, yes, absolutely. You know, Erica Jane is not a great person, but EJ Global and Erica Jane are just a tiny, tiny, tiny Mm. piece of this bigger scheme that he had going on for three decades. Like Aaron Brockovich cases involved in all of this. They, People are saying Jesus. that they weren't getting their money for that. Like, oh my it's, God. it's yeah. insane. Well, we're approaching almost a year when the divorce was announced. That was what, uh, election day? Um, you know, November. Uh, November. This is 
it doesn't seem like this is going to wrap up anytime soon. I mean, what do you think? Is this going to go on for years? Is this going to eventually come to an end within the next couple of months? What do you think? Definitely not in the next couple of months, probably within the next couple of years, only because there's going to be so many other, there are going to be so many other pieces that come beyond this. Like as of right now, there, we still aren't even able to track all of Tom's money. We're trying to, or, you know, the, the team is trying to find it, the bankruptcy team, not my, when I say we, I don't mean my, I don't mean to include <laughs> myself in that. Um, the bankruptcy team, it, they're trying to liquidate all of his assets. You see that they're trying to sell his house. It's not selling. They're trying to bring in money from the active cases that, that were still open at Girardi Keys last year when this all started to crumble. So, you know, that that's obviously one of the biggest assets in all of this. But once we're able to track all the money and start to liquidate all of his assets and bring money into the estate, then, you know, the bankruptcy trustee is going to start giving some of that money back to the debtors, which are the the banks, the lenders. In some cases, it's going to be clients or it's going to be former clients and victims. As of right now, the only victim that I'm seeing at the top of the list is the Rui Gomez family. And it's only because they fought really hard in court to get their debt secured and attached to collateral that Tom had. Uh-huh. Whereas the other, you know, the other victims, like they were, you know, they were literally victims of these horrific scandals that are, you know, horrific incidents and accidents that they did didn't know any better to go and try to get their debt secured. They didn't think Tom was going to rip them off. So they're kind of way at the back of the line. But wow. once we find out where all the money is, once we start to pay people off, we can only pay them off with what is able, what they're able to have, what they have. So the assets, that's why they're going after Erica Jane's assets and trying to liquidate those. That's why they're going after her for the 25 million um, that, uh, which I also want to clarify, people think that it was like one large 25 million transfer to her bank account. That's not true. We found out that what was going on is she had a personal Amex card and Tom had a personal Amex card. They were running up this lavish lifestyle on those Amex cards. Wow. And then See? Tom was paying the bill. Tom was paying the bill at the end of the day, but he was paying it from Girardi Keese money, which we now realize was stolen money versus their own personal money. So that's why I'm kind of like, I don't even mm. know if Erica really did know because you think about it, the bimbo housewife is out there just running up her Amex and then she gives the bill to daddy to pay for it. She doesn't necessarily know what bank account it's going to pay for. So the money never went, yeah, the money never went directly to EJ Global. So, you know, and then you have like the bankruptcy uh, special counsel, Ronald Richards, who's making a huge circus storm out of all of this. And if anything, all he's doing is really, everyone loves that he's going after her on Twitter and talking to the press and informing everybody. But all he's really doing is creating such a big circus that He's building her appeal case. So if they find out that she does have to pay back that $25 million, what I predict her lawyer will then do is appeal it and say, hey, the special counsel on the case was actually biased towards my client. He was releasing personal Amex, uh, personal Amex statements that were not public record. He mm. is you know, tweeting up a storm trying to malign my client's character. He is giving false exclusives to the press that are now being retracted. So it's it's not looking good. You know, uh, even yeah. him himself, Ronald Ronald Richards makes 40% of whatever he pulls in from Erica. So if he gets that 25 million from her, he then gets a 40 40- percent cut of that money before it even goes into any of the victims or any of the lenders on top of all of Jeez. his fees being covered so all of wow. these people have something to gain from it yeah wow it sounds like a real rotten bunch of people wow yeah i was wondering why that richard sky is was in in headlines dick daily in my feed and yeah if that you clear that up that. He's calling them and offering them exclusives mm, is what's happening yeah and of course which my, my thing is like you're yeah, and like my thing is your priority should be on helping the victims if that's really what you're getting into this for, not calling the press and giving them speculative headlines, you know, all yeah. of this speculative information instead of actually providing facts. And we just saw Radar Online of all websites retracted one of his exclusives over the weekend because they found out that the information that he gave them was false. Wow. So I can see now that the villi- the, the um, victims really are at the bottom of the list and the villains, I guess is what I wanted to say. The villains are at the top um, of yeah. we're talking banks. This guy, Richards is going to get 40, 40%. So, wow. Uh, thanks so much for that. I know what it's like when you have all this information, I get asked about the free Britney movement and like, what's the latest with that? And it is a packed and loaded answer. So yeah. I appreciate you like walking me through all that. Cause I'm much more of a casual follower of this, but 
I I knew you deliver with what I was looking for because you've I've given me a, you've given me a lot of info. Thank you. Yeah, of you course know, I bet- do. I mean, I cover it weekly on the podcast. Yeah. And it's juicy. Between you and Emily D. Baker, I feel like I get a little bit of a schooling in all of this, and I'm learning. It's a good thing. I love I love Emily so much. I love her, and I have the best conversations with her when she comes on my podcast. And she like literally is able to break it all down and explain things to us in like layman's terms. Whereas a lot of this, you know, especially like I have to like Google a lot of these big like legal terms to like figure out what any of it means. And Emily comes and I just feel like safe and at home. Yes. For those who don't know, Emily has a YouTube channel podcast. She's just like Zach said, like she breaks it down. She's reading through the documents. It's all right in front of you, but she's like breaking it down in terms that you can understand. She's got a great personality. She's a former what federal prosecutor. Uh, former LADA. LADA. Oh, attorney. okay. Well, there you go. So she, um, she, I don't know. I just enjoy her as a person. I enjoy her take on things. I think she keeps it real. And like, uh, I, she has filled such a hole in the market for someone who can look at these cases and just spend two hours digging in deep. She's got her law nerds. Like, that is a whole thing. Like, she has really found an audience and found a hole in the market. It, it's, it's working for her. It is. Her channel is great. I always learn so much from it. I mean, and it's not just Girardi or Brittany. Like, she's really breaking down a lot of these these yeah. like big media cases. Yeah. I'm a big fan of hers. I have not connected with her at all. I'm just watching from afar. But, like, I definitely enjoy whenever she's got her, her Brittany feeds, that the, just, like, the single ones alone. Like, I know what I'm getting. And that's how I'm able to make a lot of my decisions now and you know, where I stand on things and educate myself is I really am going to her for a lot of that. So I'm super appreciative of what she does. So did you see this Jen Shaw Instagram story this week that was removed? Oh, her Instagram story about Erica Jane? Yeah, a picture of Erica. She, you know, she's, uh, you know, what, what do I have here? A, oh, yeah, this is according to page six. Accused fraudster Jen Shaw bizarrely uh, boasts uh, that she is the queen of the Real Housewives legal problems. And um, it's like a meme. And there's a picture of Erica, you know, um, like, look, look at me, look at my effing life. And then it shows a picture of Jen. She says, BRB, hold my drink. Uh, is, I mean, is this even a surprise? This is Jen. Like, I- I'm not even surprised by any of this anymore. This is what, this is how Jen has chosen to go about doing this. So it's ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous. And I mean, I think Jen is right to say, hold my drink because she does one up Erica in the sense that <laughs> Erica yeah. isn't a criminal. Jen Shaw is an actual criminal or <laughs> she literally has a federal investigation against her. Jen Shaw was arrested. Like there is no, you know, and she's still like being like, I'm 100% innocent. I'm like, honey, you have been investigated for years. There are many people that are turning on you on this now. Like, hello, yeah. where, when do we get of delusion and start to come into reality? The audacity. Yeah. Just to even like acknowledge it the way she has. And, and I could say the same for Erica with her stuff on her social media, but can you break down for me real quick? that Girardi post that Erica made this week, what is that supposed to represent? They said that was supposed to be a chilling post. I, what, did, what What is the T behind that? I mean, that's the big question we're all trying to figure out. So on her Instagram sh- story, she just wrote the name Girardi, period. And that's the whole story on a black screen and white text. Um, and so everyone's like, what does that mean? And I mean, the way I interpret that is like, okay, is, is this Girardi in the sense that we should focus our attention on Girardi and Tom Girardi is the attention is where the attention should be and not on me. But then it's like, well, if that's where the attention should be, maybe you should stop posting thirst traps every other day. And then we would stop like talking about you as much, mm. you know, maybe you should pretend to have, you know, pretend amnesia and then we'll all forget about you too you can go pretend to live in an old folks home like tom Girardi. but um i mean it could it could mean that we're trying to focus all the attention on tom or on the opposite end it could mean you know Girardi. i'm a Girardi through and through so i'm you know yeah supporting them i don't know i mean she hasn't really spoken out against Tom. i mean she's saying that she didn't know anything unfortunately with all the deep diving that I'm doing, I'm starting to believe that she didn't know about 
the scheme he was running. I think she knew he was like a shark and a and a a bad guy that maybe cut a few corners, but I don't think she knew to the full extent. Um, again, I think she likes to think she's a lot smarter than she actually was yeah. when it came to Tom. But yeah. I mean, you can interpret it two ways. She's either saying focus on Girardi or I stand with Girardi because I am a Girardi. But then again, I, I feel like it doesn't make sense that she would be standing by Girardi since she filed for divorce from Girardi that I don't think she, I would assume she wouldn't be keeping her Girardi name. Well, what she needs to do is keep her mouth shut and get off social media. It's her, I mean, I don't know what she's doing on the show. I have been looking at Beverly Hills. I started with just looking at those after shows they put up on YouTube. And then, obviously, in the last two weeks, there's been more discussion around it. So I've tuned in to see how it's been handled. But, like, this stuff, it's, it's, we're talking about a large case that, you know, Zach, you really updated us at the top. But what we're watching on the show is now, like, what, nine months old? Like, I don't like it's from the beginning of the year. So it's, yeah, it's hard to really be too invested because it's just like you said, this has been ongoing. This is a whole thing. So I really don't yeah. care what she had to say nine months ago. I really don't. I want to know what she has to say today, personally. And yeah. I think she's handling hers. I don't think she could handle herself any worse. I don't think she could look any worse. I'm not talking about her looks. I'm looking, talking strictly on how she's acting, speaking, presenting herself. Yeah. I only see someone who's extremely privileged, really benefiting with the Range Rover, yeah. the heated pool. I don't know if it was heated or not, but the pool, the house. I see someone who's sitting there with you know her hair done, eating caviar pie, like you said. And yes, she's probably going through an emotional hell, or is she? I don't really know. But I mean, when you focus on the victims, you see someone like her who has no remorse. It's all been said about Erica at this point, but I just want to throw my two cents in because it's been a minute since I've been on the podcast. I think it's shameful. And I am like, there's no question in my mind that uh, she is... Uh, in a bad place with this. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad look. Let's just boil it down to with me. It's a really bad look on her part. I have no sympathy for her. It, it is a really bad look. It's not, again, it's not doing her any favors. The reunion tapes this week. So I'm curious to see mm. what she ends up saying in the reunion. Cause like you said, this was all not just at the beginning of the year, but at the beginning of the scandal, this yes. is when things start started to break so this we're what we're getting are their raw reactions but we even as you know viewers of the show have done our own research and know so much about it ourselves that we you know we've become so savvy and privy to everything else that's transpired that we have questions and we, I want to see what is going to be her statement now. I mean, is she going to acknowledge the victims? Is she going to show remorse? Is she going to distance herself from Tom? You know, is she going to join only fans? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I think Andy is going to give her a couple softball questions. I think he'll give her an opportunity to be able to show some type of remorse. We'll see what she does with it. She's a very cold person. She'll, you know, probably be a set, like literally like a statement, like a, like a four word statement of like, I feel very bad for them or something. It'll be very quick. I don't really know what she's going to come out and do and say, I, I don't have high expectations for her. Again, I only see someone really benefiting here and not showing contrition. So to me, it's ugly. I don't like to see it. I do want to point out though, because I was listening to the West show Crappens guy, and they hit the nail on the head for what I think is true. The cast this season, I think they are really, they have it wrong. They think that viewers are going to be Team Erica. They don't realize the public perception has changed and they're trying to ride for Erica this season. But I think the majority of the audience is questioning Erica the way Sutton is. And it's like they're on the wrong side. What do you think? Um, I mean, I don't, I haven't necessarily taken a side. I'm always like team sh the show, you know, and team whatever's best for the show. And I love the mess. I think Sutton has a lot of great and valid points. I think she's asking a lot of the questions that we want to know. I think, you know, Dorit sort of starting to push that. Mm -hmm. I love Garcelle's shade that like, I think everybody, I think this is a great cast and I think everybody is really delivering this season um, and, and really providing a good show for us this season. But I mean, I, that could be biased because Beverly Hills always reigns supreme in my eyes. But I, I think the cast was so worried about how this was all going to be handled. I don't think that they thought anybody was going to be team Erica, but I think they were worried about picking a side or really getting into it. And though, you know, I understand everybody loves Sutton right now, but I also, I'm like, but like Sutton wasn't con like, if you really listen to Sutton and, and put apart the hatred for Erica, but really just focus on Sutton's position, Sutton's not 
like team the victims. Like Sutton is very much like, I don't want to be dragged into this. Mm. I'm worried about my reputation. I'm worried about how it's going to make me look if I'm around Erica. Like Sutton's yeah. priority is very much on herself. Garcelle, on the other hand, Good is point. talking about the victims. And Garcelle yeah. brought her sister into it. Yeah. yeah, Dorit talked about the victims. She also talked about, you know, her her multicultural staff. But like, you know, I think <laughs> there yeah. are other women that are bringing a better point. Sutton's asking great questions, but Sutton's motive is ultimately mm-hmm. on her reputation. And considering she was just on Jimmy Kimmel, I think her reputation is doing just fine. It does seem that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I will say I have done nothing but hated on Beverly Hills in this podcast for like the last four years. I just thought it was just dreadful. It was the worst creative shape. I mean, but I will say I will admit that this season has a story. The others, in my opinion, did not. But I, it's undeniable that there is a gripping factor to this season. And the cast really is all present and involved, whether you agree with them or not. You know, it, this is probably the most engaging the show will ever get. And, you know, I got to give it some credit. I just got to say what made it. Yeah, I think what made it really good in the first couple of seasons was it was real. You had Kim's sobriety. You had Taylor's abuse. You had, you know, all of these storylines that were based in reality. And then we got away from that. And I think this season really brought us back into reality because it's like as this news is breaking, you have cameras that are on you as the L.A. Times article is coming out. You have no choice but to react to it all in the moment while you're being and I think that's why this season is so much better is because we're getting raw, real reactions and life from these women. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Vanderpump rules. The trailer dropped. And I got to be honest with you. I mean, have we outgrown this show yet? I think I have. I don't know if I need this anymore. You know, what do you make of this? Are you interested? I mean, I think I'm interested in the sense that like, there's so many unanswered, unaddressed questions and points from last season and all the scandal that broke last year that I think a lot of us are going to be tuning in just to see how it's all addressed. Um, I think these first couple of episodes, primarily the first two episodes are really going to be but sinks or what helps the the show sink or swim because if they're great then we're going to stay captivated and want to keep watching and if they're not great then we're going to lose interest and not even give it the time of day so i think mm-hmm. the first two episodes are going to be crucial but i do think we have kind of outgrown it a little bit in the sense that like the sh- what the show was and what the show is now is completely different we watched a bunch of young hustling kids in in hollywood trying to make it and now you know we've seen them make it and they're having babies and getting married and they're just in a different place in their life that like i don't know if it's still the same show that we want to watch because it's not that we subscribe to originally good point it'll be interesting to see the ratings i think the engagement however will still be there it's a loud show on social media It, it that might might save it. To me, I view the show as a very ten, and even the show, but also Lisa Vanderpump. It's just very ten years ago, and I know the show didn't even come out ten years ago. It came out in twenty thirteen, but I just view the whole thing as kind of like stale at this point. I mean, I like Sheena. I'm glad that she's on it. I guess, but do I? She's still there. That's how I view it. I'm like, she's still on this. Okay, is that enough for me to watch? Uh, that looks like it might have the most potential story wise Uh, her and Brock I don't know I mean I'm struggling with it I don't know if I'm gonna bother okay I love me some Vanderpump so I am looking forward to it just to see how a lot of you know the things that have happened over the past year are addressed I think the show is going to severely lack not having Stassi, Jax, Brittany and Kristen Um, you know I know that's a controversial take but it's like the show was built on bad people and bad behavior mm-hmm. um, that removing some of the baddest people on the show for their worst behavior, I don't think necessarily helps the show more than it could hinder the show. That's not to say that them getting fired wasn't the right or appropriate thing to do. But I think, like you said, it is 10 years ago. It is, you know, and the place that we were in as viewers was very 10 is is gone. Mm-hmm. You know, we've grown, we've evolved culturally, we've evolved, you know, and even in television that has evolved as well. So, I mean, it, we'll see what this we'll season has see. to bring. Yeah, no, I agree with your point. Yeah, we shall see. And another thing we're going to see whether we want to or not someday 
The Real Housewives of New York City season 13 reunion. Uh, it's quote oh being frantically rescheduled or scheduled. Uh, you know, who the hell knows? Uh, there's, this has been out there for a long time. They had this booked, right? And then it got canceled. That's what happened. They had it booked and then it, they postponed it and then they postponed it again. And then it was allegedly or uh, rumored to be placed on hold indefinitely. And then now here we are. Let it go. Just let it go. The season ran its course. It was a very long season. I said on um, Jacques Peterson's podcast, um, if I didn't have Twitter in front of me, I probably would say this was an okay season, but this, there's such negativity around this season. It's just, it's so like hated that I just think, just let it, just, we don't need to reunite, please. I'm okay moving on. Yeah, because all the reunion is is just rehashing everything that we saw throughout the show, and it's like, do we really want to rehash that? It's just it's it's time to put the show on the shelf, I guess. It shouldn't be though. It should not have got to this point creatively. I understand the COVID restrictions, but creatively, it should have not got to this point. It's a shame that it was kind of just like certain decisions were made. Roni goes woke. We're gonna get rid of Dorinda. We're gonna just kind of like figure. We're gonna you know have house parties and see what happens. It was just, I don't know. Creatively, this isn't a tough, tough spot. I think the only thing they can do is go back and redraw lines. Yeah, I mean, even this, the it, I feel like one of the biggest issues too is even the cast is phoning, the veterans are phoning it in. They're, even, oh, yeah. they're not even giving us anything anymore that it's like, and that comes from the, the, the top down. You know, I think the producers were phoning it in. I think they thought Ebony was going to be an easy, you know, ratings hit. It's the first yep. black woman on on the show, and it, you know we're going to talk about race, and that's going to be a big talking point, and you know it's gonna it's gonna sell itself. And I think we got lazy and we got sloppy yep. with the creativity in the show, and and here we are. And totally, this is a comedy show, basically. In my opinion, it's like a comedy lifestyle reality program, and yep casting someone like ebony and i i don't bring her in i don't i'm actually fine with her because she, she came up with a job to do i'm sure they came to her and said the benefit of you doing the show is you can you know educate the viewer as well as your housewives you can you know really get into what's important to you and she came in there as that was why she was there that was her job to do as well as engage with the women and go out but so you can't fault her really for going in and using the platform but the show leaned too heavily into it and unfortunately Unfortunately, I don't know if it was just the best fit, the best fit for her. And, you know, I don't know. I, I hear she's going over the view to test a seat out over there. You know, that might be a better fit. Yeah, I don't think I like Ebony. I don't think she fits for New York, though. I yeah. think she's great. Just not on this reality show. I mean, think of it like this. It's like as if we had The Simple Life with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, which was a reality show, but it was a comedy reality show. And we then tried to tackle race issues on that show. Oh, my you God. Know? Could you imagine? <laughs> That's what I mean. Like it yeah. would be so, and in this climate, it just doesn't work. It and doesn't that's not work. to say that there isn't a way to do these things, but I think production, I mean, I know every, everyone wants to blame Ebony, but to a degree, I mean, you have to hold the women, the cast accountable because like I said, the veterans are phoning it in. I think production thought this was going to be an easy sell and that's why they pumped up Ebony to even go even harder. And so I think Ebony is getting a lot of the heat and it's not fully, like it's everybody's fault, but Ebony's not to blame for this season. Mm -hmm. No, fair statement. And this show, uh, it ended. The finale was uh, the Valentine's Day or on Valentine's Day. That was seven months ago. So it seemed to appear that these women were, you know, united. And when they did the press for the new season, they said, oh, that last episode, it really brought us all together. It came full circle. And then things have fallen apart. I don't really know all the details. I haven't really been keeping up with it. But according to page six, this is where we're currently at. Ramona went to dinner with Ebony to make peace, and Luann had to be coaxed uh, to answer her phone while living her best life in Europe, but we're making it happen, referring to the reunion. So things have fallen apart. This is, you know, one can allege this is why these reunions kept being rescheduled. Uh, just, it sounds like this whole show needs to be like, 
unplugged from the wall and replugged back in. Like it's just that we don't need the reunion. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go, Elsa. Let it go. We let Dallas go. We let well, we brought Miami Miami back, uh, but yeah. I think we need to let it go with Dallas. Like it, it had a good run. Like at some point when you stay too late at the party and you're the last one to leave, like it, you know, it's not great for you. And I think Roni either needed to take a long gap and I hope that's what they end up doing. I'm hearing that's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's like, what at I want some them point to you do. Also know, yeah, at some point you also know when to end the train though. You know, let it be a good run. Yeah. Friends ran for 10 years and then they're like, okay, we're done. You know, and they kept it and they ended on a high. It, I, it may be time. I mean, I think Housewives was never going to last forever. Right, you know? right. Oh, well, Bravo will milk this and they will reinvent this and they will keep trying. And if it'll either work or it won't. And I think we're seeing the same thing with OC where they're just having to keep going back to the table to make something happen. And yeah, it might just be done. So we're going to have to see what happens because... Yeah, the shows are not going to go on. I, I was 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 always wondering when we would get to this day, and I don't know if they're going to let it go. I just don't. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to be taking a look at the VMAs at a 2003 performance that is truly legendary in the old Hollywood talk segment. I, I did a ton of research for this. I can't wait to get into it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Meghan Markle and some approval ratings and disapproval ratings, just to have a little bit of a laugh. That and more in a moment. Now this. 